Hello and welcome to the Grenade Creations podcast. This is episode 56. My name is Kirsty and I am coming to you from the west coast of Scotland. Welcome back or, or a big massive hello to any new viewers. I was meant to record last week but that didn't happen. I was feeling a wee bit under the weather with my Crohn's disease and decided to take a self-care day basically and stayed in my bed in my jammies all curled up and cosy watching Lord of the Rings. Pretty perfect if you ask me. Well, plus some knitting when I had some energy so that's why I didn't record last week. Uh, it has been my intention of recording every second week uh, but it won't always be possible. So here we are today and I have three finished objects to share with you and three works in progress. Technically I have way more works in progress than that but they haven't had any work done. So shall we jump in? First of all I should probably say where you can find me. You can find me on Instagram as Greneg underscore creations and you can find me on Ravelry as little dash b. You can also join the Ravelry group that we have for this podcast by searching for Greneg Creations Podcast. If anyone has any issues with that, please let me know in either the comments down below or by messaging me on Ravelry. So, let's get started with some finished objects. Um, we'll start with my favourite finished object. After I scratch my eye and take a drink, because I'm so professional. I should probably add we're in a slightly bit different setup today because where I have been recording the last couple of episodes, which is just next door, is really dark and dreary today because it's so horrible outside. It is such a dreary and dark day here in Scotland and it has just, uh, it's been a miserable couple of days weather-wise and it just shows in my room next door. It's so dark and dreary and no matter the amount of lights, it just wouldn't look warm and nice and comfortable unlike my bedroom. I especially like my new fairy lights. So yes, let's jump in shall we? So these are my vanilla socks. These are my own recipe. I do 64 stitches on a 2.25 millimeter needle. I tend to uh, now prefer toe up. So I will cast on my toe up on um, a magic loop with a fairly short cable but not compared to my 9 inch circulars which I then move on to for the rest of the sock. So I didn't really do anything different with these. Um, I wasn't sure how the yarn was going to come out which I, I love how it has come out but I did do a fish lips kiss heel. I was favourite, not favouriting but I was more drawn towards cuff down for a while with a heel flapping gusset but I now do seem to be preferring a toe up method with a fish lips kiss heel. So let's talk about the yarn shall we? The main yarn which is here, I was doing that on the back there and I was like you guys can't see me do that. So uh, the main yarn that has been used on the body of the sock is by Mothy and the Squid in the That's Enough Black Speckles and then the contrasting cuff yarn is a random mini that I got as part of an advent swap a couple of years ago. So I won't really be able to tell you where you can get this uh, but I can tell you that this was from Mothy and the Squid. I purchased this at be Inspired Fibres in Edinburgh though so I didn't get it directly from Mothy and the Squid herself. But I really really love this yarn. Um, I used about 50 grams. I think I have about 52 or 53 grams left as per my scale. Um, and I was going to see if anyone would want to do a swap for this yarn because it seems such a waste that I have a good 50 grams left that could do somebody a pair of socks. Um, normally when I have uh, an amount like that left over I would make socks for my mum but I don't really think she would want this colourway. So if anyone does want 
the leftovers and wants to do a swap for the equivalent in an indie dye drawing, hit me up and let me know and we could maybe get something arranged. So that's my first one. And then my second one, I will slip one on whilst so I can show you. So I had an idea in my head to get a few things knitted and ready for going to New York at the end of February with my partner Scott and I have managed to get some of those things done. I took the pressure off myself because I feel I'd put too much pressure on myself to get a huge amount of things done. Like I wanted to get a hat for myself, a hat for Scott, fingerless mittens, um, leg warmers and preferably something uh, new for around my neck. And I have just remembered I technically have four finished objects but I don't know where one of them is. Whoops. Uh, so I decided to take the pressure off and just was just said to myself what I get done is what I get done because I was starting to feel overwhelmed with how much I wanted to complete and it was starting to take the joy out of my knitting. So um, I worked when I could on some of the projects because I've got a new method for my knitting which I'll go about, which I'll talk to you about um, after all the projects. But I did manage to get my fingerless mittens completed. So you can see in the camera that there is a change in the colour. So this was a gradient set from the Knitting Goddess and it's in her 100% BFL base and it starts in this really gorgeous, um, rich, uh, turquoise blue and then it gets lighter and lighter and lighter as you go. I didn't fade these yarns at all I just decided that when one was finishing I would just like block in the next colour so you can see a clear change here and you can see a very clear change here as well so I didn't do a fade. I couldn't be bothered for fingerless mittens. It just... no. <laughs> so uh, there were certain design elements I wanted for these mittens and I've talked about this part before that this can be folded down. Yep, all the ends have still have to be woven in, in case anyone's wondering. So I deliberately made it so that this could be folded down or pushed back up so that I can get extra warmth on my fingers. And then I also made them extra long so that in case it's really cold and I need some extra warmth on my forearms or I could push it all down and get more gathered fabric around my wrist. So I'm really really happy with them. I didn't write down the pattern, I made this up as I went along. I originally thought I was following a pattern and then I realised that what I thought was the cast on for the fingers was actually the cast on for the arm. So everything after that I changed and I modified it as I went along and I made it fit me. I was constantly trying them on. I say them. I was constantly trying one on because I was doing one via magic loop so that I could try it on and then I was doing the other one on my nine inch circs. So one was constantly being tried on and fitted to my arm so if I don't know how well this is going to come up but there's a line here and that's my line of increases and then again on the thumb there's a line here and that's my decreases so I decreased in the middle of the thumb here and then I decreased here at the sides and then I increased down here. So you can see it does get quite wide here because I have quite chunky arms. So I've deliberately done it so that it fits me and altered it in that way and then I just mirrored it on the opposite one. So yeah I'm really really happy with them. I need to pop them in a citric acid bath because the colour does run a wee bit on the more mostly the first two and a bit colours. Um, everything from about here down doesn't seem to run but I do need to pop it in a citric acid bath and then I will 
I'm thinking of soaking them in some conditioner, which I would need to buy because I don't actually have conditioner, because it's just a wee bit too much for my skin because I have quite sensitive skin um, and it's just a wee bit too much for me to handle. I thought because it was my hands it wouldn't be, a, like I wouldn't mind it as much but it, I, I seem to mind here in particular, like the, the very squidgy part of my arm seems to mind the BFL. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to pop them in a citric acid bath first, might do that today actually. And then I will pop them in some conditioner just to see if it takes a wee bit of the bite away from the yarn. So that's my second finished object. And then my third finished object I'm very happy with and Scott is over the moon with. Um, I wanted to make him a hat for us going away. And he was just like, yeah, do what you can do. If you can't get it done, you can't get it done, which is really nice of him. Um, but I managed to get it done. So I'm going to zoom in, or move closer, because that way you'll get to see the colour. It's a very, very dark red. Um, I love this yarn, and I really... I'm sad that I've used so much of it. I think I've got about 20 grams left. So I doubled up the yarn, so it's quite a thick fabric. And... I don't recall how many stitches I cast on. I completely made this pattern up. I think it was about a hundred stitches. I done five inches of rib, which was what Scott asked for. So the ribbing stops here, and I've got five inches of rib. And then I done possibly another four and a half, five inches before I started the decrease at the crown. And then I done fairly regular decreases as well. And I've done it deliberately so that the hat can be slouchy. As so. Or that, wow that looked really bad there with my hair. Or that you can wear as a beanie. With a double layer at your ears because as I've probably mentioned about a hundred times already Scott and I are going to New York at the end of February and it can be bitter bitterly cold over there so we want to be as prepared as possible so for the warmer days he can wear it as a slouch hat and for the colder days he can wear it as a beanie with a double layer over his ears especially now that he did get his hair cut and he now has a mohawk so like he has no hair here so he's gonna be cold so yeah that's my third finished object and the yarn is from Lazy Kate Textiles this is yarn I picked up at Ovis Yarns uh, which was a bricks and mortar shop in Liverpool she is now just her online a hand dyed yarn which um, is fabulous if I don't mind saying so myself so check her out if you are looking for some uh, British breed yarn but this isn't hers this is Lazy Kate Textiles so yeah I love that colour though I think that is absolutely stunning and I need more yarn like this but again, I am sad that I only have 20 grams left. I thought, oh, I'll make a hat and I'll have at least 50 grams left. Nope. I doubled up so that it was a DK weight, not not four ply. And uh, used all the yarn up. So thankfully he appreciates it and he loves the hat. So that's that's something. If he didn't appreciate it, I'd be stealing it back. Okay. So those are my finished objects and now we're probably just going to move on to the works in progress. So I mentioned earlier that I work my projects in a slightly different way than I used to. Uh, I have so, I had so many things I wanted to do and then I had something I had to do or I still have to do. And I felt like if I only worked on the one I had to do, which has a very, a very nice um, deadline like I have three months to do this and um, 
I can talk about it and it is part of my whip so you will see it but because it's something I have to do I don't want to put my pressure I don't want to put the pressure on myself to get it done like every single day so uh, what I have decided is that I will work on one project a day and then every other day I'll change it up to a different project so at the moment I have three objects on the go those three objects are constantly in rotation so today I Mm, I'll probably work on my sock today. I haven't done any knitting today so far and it's two o'clock in the afternoon. So I'll pick up my sock today and then tomorrow I'll work on my hat and then the next day I will work on the sweater. And I will constantly do this every other day. Um, so on that note, I'll start with my sock. I started this sock because I was... Uh, attending an appointment with a friend of mine. She was going up for her, an, an appointment that was going to be quite a few hours and I wanted to keep her company which didn't end up working that way because of the appointment itself but I did get a good amount of knitting done. So this is my sock. This is Lady Rainicorn by uh, Gamer Crafting and I love this so much. Oh, it's blowing out the yellows. It's really blowing out the yellows. That's not going to work either. There's yellow right right here. So you can see where my tension's been changing. So I was knitting quite tightly there and then I started relaxing here and then I got super anxious here. So you can see where my tension has changed dramatically in this sock. But I like it nonetheless. And then I've started a contrasting fish lips kiss heel again. So, um, I don't know what the yarn is. It was, uh, again, I think it was part of an advent swap. Um, or I've gained it somewhere over the years. This is not a yarn I would buy. I like the colour. It's just not something, I, I know for a fact I did not buy this yarn. So I've either been gifted this or I've received it in a swap somewhere and I have no idea who dyed it or which company dyed it. I know nothing. The only thing I know is that I really love this yarn. Oh, you can see the yellow. But my camera's not focusing. Okay, that was awesome. So yeah, uh, loving this sock, I got the toe done the night before I was due to attend the hospital appointment and then I got all of that done uh, everything up to the start of the heel I got all of that done uh, either at the hospital or on the drive home and then I started the heel fairly late at night on whilst on a video call to some friends of mine and I was just like uh I want to do a contrasting heel I don't know what colour so they all sat very patiently with me whilst I was just like what about this one or this one or this one and uh they all agreed to pick the I don't want to say olive green I think olive green's fairly dark let's go with avocado green I hate avocados detest them but it went well because there is green in the sock. So again, this is Lady Rainicorn by Gamer Crafting. I got it on the sparkly sock base. And I'm probably going to have about 50 grams of this left over as well by the time I'm finished. Because I don't make my songs, my, my songs particularly long. I don't sing very often. Uh, I don't make my socks particularly long. So yeah, that is my first work in progress. I do have my um, my feet templates. <laughs> I have big feet. They're bigger than my head. <laughs> uh, I have my templates of my feet on my old Cheerio packet uh, for the Fish Lips Kiss Heel. Those are in my bag that I have been keeping this in because um, I knew I wouldn't get up to the heel when I was out but I wanted to be safer than sorry so I always pop them in a bag but I need to make new templates because this one in particular has just gotten really flopsy and just 
Like you can see all, you can't see it, but there's like a ton of creases in this cardboard now from this one in particular. Because I do have one foot bigger than the other and I think it is my left foot. But I need to take new um, outlines of my feet. Yeah, that's number one. Uh, I'll show this, I'll show the hat next because it's easier and smaller to show. I'm using up some of my yarn leftovers, I'm using up some scraps and I decided I wanted to make a brioche hat. I am in love with this colour combination. So the grey is one of my hand dyed and the yellow I think I took the thing out. This is Uncommon Thread and it is as bright as the camera is showing it right now. This is yarn I got when I was in London a couple of years back uh, and I purchased it in Loop. So this, I know for a fact it's the Uncommon Thread but I don't know what the colourway is but it is, it is that bright. And I cast on Again, just kind of making it up as I go along, but it is essentially just going to turn out like a brioche cat hat. Um, I like the inside as well. So that's the reverse. But this is probably the side I'm going to wear out, although I do plan on making a brim. So it's going to be like that, which I think is pretty freaking awesome. Um, I would like to have this finished for going to New York, but if I don't get it done, I don't get it done. I'll probably take it on the plane though if I don't get it finished, just to give myself something interesting to work on. But I really, really love it. I am having so much fun when I'm knitting this. Um, although it did take me a while to remember how to do brioche because I hadn't actually done brioche in quite a while. So that was interesting to try to remind myself. I think when I started this hat I, it took me about four attempts to cast it on and I eventually just lost my, I was going to say the S word but let's not, let's not swear on the podcast but yeah I lost my composure and had a small tantrum and Scott was right here to witness that tantrum but I got there in the end. Uh, it's slow going because obviously you have to do one row with one colour, one row with another colour. But I'm getting there. It's a nice project to pick up and put down. And like I say, with my new rotation on how I'm doing my knitting, um, it's enough to have to work on. But it is slow going because it is, like I say, it's one row with one colour, another row with another colour. And that's just still one row. But it will grow, it will become a cat hat and I'll be walking around New York with cat ears. Ah, uh, who says you can't be 30, nearly 31 and not still be childish? <laughs> uh, this is just in one of my bags I sewed, I sewed, I sewed. Uh, I kept this one because my uh, tag started to come undone. And then my last work in progress, which is a big one, I am doing a test knit for Verity of Truly Hooked. Uh, I talked about the start of this cast on on my last pod in the last podcast. Uh, it's the Demetria sweater. I think that's how I'm how I have to say it, Demetria. Uh, and it is a test knit, so you can't currently get this pattern. And I do have until March, the end of March, to get this completed, which is perfect. Uh, but I have managed to get a lot done and I'm really happy with my progress. So here's where I am. This is a cropped sweater and it is worked top. Nope, it's worked bottom up. So this is the ribbing here for the waistband. And I have got to the point in the sweater now that I am, um, sorry, got the scratch, I will be splitting to work um, 
I'm not splitting through the sleeves because I've still got to split and then work the front and then work the back. But I don't really know if you would say it's splitting through the sleeves. I have this is my first bottom up sweater. I would normally do top down with a raglan. So this is really interesting for me and I think it um it helps Verity because I'm not like She's going to have such a mix of people that have worked top down normally or they're normally used to like sweat like sweater up. <sighs> Part of me thinks I probably shouldn't have recorded today. I haven't had my cup of tea yet. And it's too late now for me to have caffeine. So it gives her a good range of people that are... Um, what's the word? Fluent. We'll go with fluent. Uh, fluent in bottom up sweaters or people that have never done it before which is me uh, I am a wee bit worried I maybe have I maybe got the wrong size but if it doesn't fit me it's going to my sister possibly Haley. if you're watching don't get your hopes up I am in love with this sweater so far so yeah uh, I got to the point where I now uh, have to split and work the front and then the back and then work the sleeves. I haven't read too far ahead in the pattern. I don't want to, I don't want to confuse myself. But it does say here, split for the front and back. So that's where I am. And it says, work front with shaping and then join the shoulders. So yeah. I am three balls of yarn in so far. Well, I'm on my third, sorry. I'm on my third ball of yarn. Uh, this is undyed yarn that I had in my yarn dyeing stash. There is a sparkle to this. I don't know how well that's coming up. And I have all intentions of sticking this sweater in the dye pot when I am done. But I may end up regretting that if it doesn't work out right. I don't know. I'm having second thoughts on the dyeing side of it. But Either way, I got a big chunk of this done yesterday. I'm really, really happy with my progress. Um, so yeah, my sweater. That's my last project. I don't think I really got much else to say. Um, I've mostly just been working for my day job, which is exhausting at uh, the most, most times it is very, very, very exhausting. Um, I am on proper countdown now to finishing up work for my two weeks holiday and my five days in the States. Um, I'm sorry if you're sick of me talking about it, but to me it's huge. I've never been to New York before and I'm so, so excited. Very, very nervous as well, but that's just because of my health. Um, don't worry, I have medical insurance. Um, Scott and I are planning on recording a lot whilst we're in the States, and we're going to compile the videos. Um, we decided at the weekend that we're going to do it so it's like a daily vlog, but none of it will get posted until I'm back. Um, but we're going to do it like day by day. And it's going to be really interesting because it's going to it's going to be a, like a combination of our both our lives because it's going to show his gluten free side because he has celiac disease and then it's going to show the yarn shop side because I plan on going to quite a few yarn shops while I'm away. Uh, I don't necessarily intend to buy from each of them. It's more just to see them, like go to them, visit them, wander them, wander around, that kind of thing. Um, and then it's also just going to be like like showing where we go and what we do. So if anyone's interested in that, stay tuned. But again, I will not be posting a single thing until we're back. And then I am headed down to Manchester. Uh, second week of March. Uh, only going down for a night and then I'm going, I'm on the way back up, we're stopping by a friend's house and we're going to stay there for an eve, like for one night and then we're going to drive back home on the Friday 
uh, which I'm really, really looking forward to because I haven't been to Manchester since I was a kid. I fully plan on... So it turns out my camera does stop recording after a certain amount of time. I thought it just kept going and ran into a new block on the card, but it doesn't do that. So, don't know if, I, if I'd already spoke about this before it stopped recording, or whether I just noticed in the nick of time, but I'm going down to Manchester in the second week of February, uh, second week of March, going down to stay in Manchester for one night, but we'll be in Manchester roughly a day and a half, two days, um, and then uh, the night after we are stopping by at a friend's house to say hi and drop something off and to stay the night, uh, which is going to be really really cool because she moved away and I didn't I didn't get to see her as much before she moved in the first place but now she's moved away and it's just going to be nice to spend time with her and then on the Friday we're going to be coming back up the road and I think we're going via Edinburgh to the gluten free bakery that Scott really likes, I like it as well but we haven't decided if that's happening or not yet and then I have nothing else planned after that Everything seems to be happening in Mar February and March. But yeah, that's my life. Uh, I'm going to finish watching The Hobbit once this is all done and I've recorded, like I've finished uh, importing and uploading everything to YouTube. I'm going to start watching The Hobbit. Uh, well, I'm going to finish watching The Hobbit. Uh, I've been on a Lord of the Rings and a Hobbit kick recently. Uh, I really, really enjoy it. I've watched it so many times. Uh, I don't know... I, ha I have this weird thing when it comes to watching things that I find it quite nerve-wracking finding something new to watch. So I watch the, some of the same things over and over and over again. Uh, which could probably drive some people up the wall, but it is what it is, each to their own. Um, but yeah, that's my evening. I go back to work tomorrow. Three weeks, Mona countdown. Three weeks, three more work weeks, and then I'm off. Yay! <laughs> uh, if you ever just really needed a holiday, that's that's where where I've got to. I really need this holiday. Um, but yeah, that's it. I've rambled on enough now. You're all probably bored stiff or falling asleep. But thank you so much for staying with me. I really do appreciate it. Um, I'm going to try and get back to the every two weeks thing uh, from today. But don't hold me to it because it is dependent on my health. My health does come first. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day and your and, and, your, and or your next week or two. I'm going to shut up now. Bye. <laughs>